Education, education, this is the foundation. Our rising population needs sound education to be recognized anywhere you go. And a very special good morning, Trinidad and Tobago and the rest of the world. I'm Marlon Hopkinson. And as always, welcome to the morning edition. Listen to this song now, man. I'm, 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 and I'm just thinking, I wonder if I could write a song like this boy. I, I better make an attempt, you know, because I'm sure that this, this song was done so many years ago. And up to today, it is, for, it, is for, it is forever green, right? Yeah, so a very special good morning to all of you. For, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Let's check out to see what's happening in the Express newspaper. On the front page today, former CEO accuses current CEO of fabrication and deception and should publicly apologize. Lisa Blast's TSTT board. And it's cocaine. Police value Tobago drug find at $0.5 million. Soldier slain and admiring the Jaguar. Energy Corporation, or Corporation rather, President of Guyana, Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali, left admires an image of a Jaguar, king of the Amazon, a symbol of strength, agility, and power worn by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley at the opening yesterday at the Guyana Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo 2024. And this is being held in Georgetown, Guyana. All right, let's check out to see what's happening on the back page now in sport. Join me. Brown still extends hand to election rivals. Three men have openly declared their intention to run for the presidency of the Trinidad and Tobago Football Federation or Association, but one of them is still hoping the field can be reduced. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. All right. So we do have a lot for you on the program today, and because of that, we are going to begin our interview uh, right away, our first interview. So joining us now is Tobago's tutor representative, Braden Roberts, and he's here to speak to us about the recent uh, stabbing incident at the Signal Hill Secondary School. Mr. Roberts, good morning. Good morning, Ms. Hopkinson. Good morning to the TV6 family and the viewers and listeners. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Roberts, as always, thank you very much uh, for joining us on the morning edition. Let's, let's begin this way. What is the situation at the Signal Hill Secondary School at this time? Well, fortunately, we would have had the division stepping in and providing <laughs> the principal and staff. Um, we uh, would have had brief conversations with the principal where measures have been put in place to have the counseling done and so forth. The reports of the child having a successful operation is, of course, good news. Um, the tension and the unease would still be there in the school. So we trust that the necessary counseling would suffice, but we need to ensure that we have sustainable measures in place so that the, the, the environment could set at a point where we are all comfortable. How has this impacted at all the school population? Sir, I didn't hear the question. How has this incident impacted the school population? All right, Mr. Not Roberts. Hearing. I'm hearing a humming in the background. Not All right. Hearing. Let's try again. Mr. Roberts, you're hearing me? Yes. All right. I think he's hearing me now. I'm just asking, how has this situation affected the school population? What impact has it had on this school in particular? And, well, it would be more than just that school. Several of our teachers have, for a very long time, been discomforted by the level of indiscipline. So it's not just when we have these things highlighted in the media where people now realize that there's violence in school. We would have these things on a daily basis where a lot of our teachers are cautious as to how they even interact with some of these students. So we need to ensure that we, we put things in place to alleviate that. So that, that's, that's the, the core of it. But the, the focus on education and pushing things forward needs to come to the fore and not these violent acts. So there's a bit of unease. But we are hoping with the discussions that are having now, something would happen going forward and we don't wait for the next incident to have an, another round of media interaction. Is this the first time that you all have had such a serious incident, re-schools in Tobago? Sorry, repeat the question? Is this the first time that you all have uh, experienced such a serious situation at a school in Tobago? Well, not, the, not, 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 not at all, sorry. We would have had the girl that was 
in the media, I think it was a, two, a month or two ago, mm. where a group of persons who have been beaten upon her, there are other incidents that don't make the media. So it's only when the camera captures it and it is then shared where attention is given to it. But we have not just in Tobago, but in all of our schools in Trinidad and Tobago where these things are, are likely to happen on any given day. So is it safe to say then, Mr. Roberts, that you're seeing an uptick in incidents? And if so, why do you think so? Well, there may be an uptick. Remember, we always started the violence in schools. You know, what we have now is the cameramen and the camera women who are on point to let us see what is happening. Um, I believe there is still an uptick, however, and it's becoming more violent as our students are, uh, they are braver now. They, they don't have that fear that we had a long time where we don't disrespect our teacher, where we don't confront police officers. They are very brave now um, to the point where one could openly have weapons in their hand and, and be using it against another person. So we need to be very careful in terms of the mindset of our children. And to your question, the what is causing the, the increase in the violence is the poison that these children are being fed. So we are fighting against this string of bad music. I don't know why Trinidad is producing such. We would have been having this kind of content from Jamaica, and Jamaica would have done some inroads in promoting more of their positive culture. Um, we need to give these Trinidad artists a project. Let us sing some nation building songs because our young persons who have the access to these things at the tip of their fingers, they are being distracted. Uh, a lot of them seeking that kind of um, a promotion where. That young lady, where we would have seen that video in Trinidad, is because of the students cheering them on where they get that fuel to continue this behavior. So we need to also create avenues where these persons can be cheered on in a positive way. So those are some of the things I believe contributing to what we are seeing. What has been the response of the THA in connection with this matter? I will have reached out to the secretary for a meeting. I hope that we can have a meeting soon so that we can discuss some more sustainable um, things that can be implemented. Yes, we will have the comforting um, remarks, the school being reached out as far as I understand and the support is being given there, but we, we need to actually put serious things into play. And one of the challenges that we have as a society, we want quick fix things. So we hope that our secretary or, or our minister could implement something that in the next two months you will see perfect results. We are not here overnight. So the, the things that we need to implement would take some time to manifest. And I trust that we, we put our shoulder to the wheel and work on those sustainable efforts where all stakeholders have a significant contribution. And not these stakeholder meetings where you have a minute to see and we to speak and then we wrap it up and call it consultation and we do very little in terms of our meaningful interaction. So I trust that we get to that level where we seriously affect the, the environment of our schools. But do you think that teachers in Tobago are prepared, are equipped to deal with situations such as these? Right. Well, the answer to that would be no. Um, we are, have been calling for us to make changes to the curriculum. We have a need now for online education. And these things are not being built up because resources are not available. I am certain that the ministry and the division is quite away. If they are to build out something like the online education or to have any changes to the curriculum, they would have a part to play in terms of the resources. What, and, 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 equipped, and equipping teachers, what we need to do is utilize our resources in an efficient way. So we don't need to bank on education alone. If we partner with tourism and we partner with agriculture and all these other, other sectors and create programs, we would be able to utilize our resources in a more efficient manner, where our teachers will get the needful, whether it's from agriculture, from the agriculture division, whether it's we want to look at things from sports and so from the sport division and not just bank on education to get this one size fits all answer. So the teachers would not be um, equipped on their own. We need to have collaborative efforts and to have collaborative efforts, you need to have consultation. But also, how do incidents such as these impact on the morale of teachers? Well, the powers that be, and even tutor at times, we ask of our teachers to put aside all their emotions and all their feelings and give their best to the classroom. It's almost impossible, but that's the encouragement we, we try to give while we work on the support systems. 
when you have a situation where a teacher would speak to a child and be openly disrespected afterwards, yes, they morally significantly affected it. We would want our teachers going home safely to their family at the end of each school day. So th there is a bit of unease. And to fight the academic challenges, the resources in terms of the financial challenges that come to face these behavioral challenges, it's not easy for any teacher. And I would always say to persons, we believe teaching is this nice glorified thing where you have a certain number of vacations each vacation each year and it's it's all nice and dandy. It's it's a very challenging and taxing profession. And we would want to ensure we support our teachers. So I'm calling on parents as well, that we give the teachers that support that we all need to give our best to our students. Because the more students that fail, we don't have a chance of bringing back society because these persons who are failing now are going to be parents soon. And then we're going to have the same kind of thing repeating. And, and where do we put our stop it? Let's speak a little bit about support systems that you referred to earlier. And if you could just give us an assessment of these support systems, including, let's say, counselors, uh, student counselors, and let's also look at the issue of deans of discipline. I don't know if that is uh, still a part of the school system, right? But let's look at all of these support systems that are in place to help um, students and also teachers. Right, so and it's a very good question, eh? a, a, a good point for us to discuss. We have these things in place, but just like the teachers, they are under resourced. So we will have a certain number of guidance officers who will have five, five, six schools and not five, six children that they could give a, a, a particular attention to. We will have these the social workers and we have deans in our school. We may have two or three deans per school. We may have safety officers about two or three per school. However, the resources that they need to be effective, they are, they are not there. Um, in, in, this, in terms of the guidance officers and the social workers and so on, they would be overworked in terms of the number of schools that they are asked to treat with. So we, we have things in place, but how effective are they? So we need to assess that. And as I would have indicated earlier, if we cannot increase the resources, we need to pull the resources together and collaborate so that we can make them more efficient. And, and that's really where the call is. We have, and if I look at how the curriculum is structured, we have the math teacher doing his curriculum during his 40 minute period or whatever period during the day. Then we hand over those students to the social studies teacher. We need to have a project in the school where the math teacher is in tune with what the social studies teacher is doing. And the work is more meaningful to our students where they, they're more captivated and not just left to the, the social things that, they are, that are easily at their fingertips. So we need to utilize our resources in a manner where they can be more efficient. I don't see where we're going to have additional stuff. And it's not adding more things all the time that would fix a problem. We need to utilize what we have. So yes, we have deficiencies, but they are segmented and that way it's not as efficient as we hope it to be. Yeah. Mr. Roberts, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for speaking with us this morning. It's always a pleasure to be on the program, and I trust that the media will also play that role in promoting the positives as we look towards making sure that it's a better place. Absolutely, Mr. Roberts, absolutely. All right, so we'll speak to you again uh, sometime in the future. Until uh, then, take care. All right, so we are going to a very short break. Coming back, everybody. Anywhere you go. Have your certificate to show To enjoy any kind of happiness Knowledge is the key to success